Let's take a look at Zvezda's Soviet 122mm self-propelled howitzer in 1/100th scale. This kit is from the company's Hot War series of modern plastic vehicles. Modern mechanised armies need mobile support units. The 2S1 Kvozdika or Carnation provided artillery fire support to Soviet tank and motor rifle divisions. If we look at the back of the box there's a three view of the completed kit. We can also see there are 19 parts and the completed vehicle will be 7.4 cm long. Continuing the current trend, the unit card for Zvezda's Hot War game is not included and can be downloaded from the company's website. Let's look inside. The box contains two sprues of dark green plastic, this one page instruction sheet and a generic Soviet decal sheet with tactical numbers. The instructions are very straightforward and clear. The only option is alternate parts for the gun travel lock to be in the deployed or stowed position. The decal sheet has individual Soviet tactical numbers. With the individual numbers you can make whatever tactical numbers you need. There was a lot of variation in numbering schemes in use. There are no national markings so you'd need to source third party decals for these. National markings were not common on Soviet vehicles so not a major issue. If we look at the plastic, this first sprue has the main hull and turret pieces. These have good, crisp detail. Even the underside of the hull has some nice panel detail. The other sprue has the suspension and road wheels, as well as the internal bracing pieces and the main gun. Tracks are one piece parts with seven well detailed road wheels per side. Track detail is a bit simplified but fine for this scale. Overall, the parts are sharp and well defined. There's no flash or moulding defects I can see. So the plastic looks good, let's build it. Construction starts with the lower hull piece, so snip this off the sprue. This step also uses the hull bracing pieces. A less obvious part is this bar with headlights. These are recessed into the hull so add this part first. There's a pin to seat this piece in place. Next fit the internal bracing pieces. These have pins as well. The angled part goes upwards and towards the rear. Push these firmly into place to seat them well to avoid gaps in the upper hull and suspension pieces later. Now we can cut off the suspension and track parts. The suspension comprises the hull side and suspension arms for the road wheels. The tracks have seven road wheels per side and as is usual for Zvezda kits at this scale, the road wheels are well detailed but the tracks are simplified. Push the suspension pieces onto the pins on the bracing piece in the hull. A bit of pressure here will make a solid, gap-free fit. Now the track parts go on. There are three guide pins here to aid alignment. Note that the teethed drive sprocket should be at the front of the vehicle. Cut and trim the rear hull piece next. This fits onto the guide pins on the hull bracing pieces. Again, a bit of pressure and some glue on the edges will give you a gap-free fit. The last major piece for the hull assembly is the upper hull. Cut and trim this piece and then push it onto the pins in the bracing pieces. This can be a bit fiddly to get all the pins lined up, but with a bit of care, pressure and glue we'll get a nice result. That's the hull completed. Now we move on to the turret. Snip the upper and lower pieces from the sprue. You can also cut free the main armament, the 122mm howitzer. This is on a round mounting that allows elevation and depression of the gun in the turret after assembly. This is important for an artillery piece as the guns can be raised on the table, but lowered again for transport and storage. The best of both worlds. I used my hobby knife to open up the end of the barrel. Use a pin to mark the centre hole and then drill or use a hobby knife to make the hole. Now assemble the turret upper and lower pieces with the gun sandwich between them. This is a bit fiddly to do while you're filming the process and I was struggling to keep it in shot, but you get the idea. A bit of glue will hold it all together. There are just a few pieces left to assemble like the back plate for the turret. This has snap fittings but I've used some glue here. A bit much really, whoops. A side stowage box and a searchlight at the commander's hatch completes the turret build. This just drops onto the hull. Here's the finished vehicle. I think this looks great. As you can see here, there's plenty of detailing on the upper decks, engine grills, exhausts and so on. The road wheels and tracks look good. 
The Zvezda kit includes these stowage racks on the rear of the hull. Detail is strong and well defined. The assembled kit doesn't have any gaps or poor fit of parts anywhere. This was a quick and easy build. It went together well and the end result really looks the part. I have two more in my stash ready to build to make a full three gun battery for Team Yankee. Let's look at some history. The 2S1 Gvozdika is a self propelled artillery vehicle. Based on the chassis of the MTLB Soviet tracked utility vehicle, the Carnation mounts a 2A31 122mm howitzer. The gun has a semi automatic breech and can fire heat, flechette, chemical, illumination, and leaflet rounds, as well as high explosive fragmentation. There's also a rocket assisted HE round for greater range. Self propelled artillery are designed to keep up with modern mechanised warfare. This was particularly important for Soviet forces as Cold War doctrine was based on deep penetration which hinged on speed and mobility. Carnation is amphibious and is propelled in the water by its tracks. This was also an important consideration in maintaining momentum in a drive across Europe. Development of this vehicle began in the late 50s, entering service in 1972. It was manufactured in Russia, Poland and Bulgaria. Soviets termed artillery the god of war, and the 2S1 was deployed in great numbers, with more than 10,000 produced. Each tank division typically had 72 guns, while motor rifle divisions had 36. In action, these were often deployed close behind the assault troops, ready to exploit a breakthrough. If we look at the Team Yankee card for the Carnation, it can be used for both bombardment and direct fire. Skill is a 5+, plus, so you're going to want to take a forward observer to improve the chance of ranging in. Armour is light and poor assault and counteract stats mean you'll need to keep these out of close combat. Bombardment range is 88 inches or 220 centimetres, so you should have the range to reach across the board. Anti-tank is 4 and firepower is 3+. Plus. Direct fire is also pretty effective, with a 24 inch or 60 centimetre range, anti-tank of 21 and 2 plus firepower. This is pretty respectable and should give tanks pause for getting too close. The guns are brutal so they can also dig out infantry if required, but the slow firing rule limits the effectiveness of fire when on the move. You shouldn't forget that this unit can fire a smoke bombardment, or direct fire smoke, useful to screen units and reduce the effectiveness of tank and missile fire. The Soviet organisation chart lets you take batteries of three or six guns, and many lists allow organic batteries for tank and infantry units as well as a divisional support option. This means if you really want to, you can end up with a lot of these guns on the table. So that's the plastic 2S1 Gvozdika 122mm SP artillery vehicle from Svezda. The plastic Svezda kit is a solid alternative to Battlefront's resin and metal kit for Team Yankee. Svezda's hot war range is at a higher price range than their World War II kits, so there isn't really a great price advantage for the plastic kits here. Detail in plastic is usually a bit crisper, but some people like the weight of resin kits. But given there's little price difference between them, which kit you choose is up to your personal tastes. Artillery was an integral part of Soviet doctrine, so it might be time to add some of these to your force. Let me know how they work for you. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful, and subscribe to the Fog of War channel on YouTube to see more videos like this.